This is it, the last video in our course. Let's move quickly to tie this all together by building this addicting persistent menu. We're gonna start this whole process by building a nav wrapper. And that nav wrapper is going to be made of a div block. So that div block can have a class. We can call that class nav wrapper and we'll set some explicit dimensions. We'll do 60 by 60 and then we'll set its position not to absolute, but to fixed. Now, what this means is as we scroll up and down the page, it stays persistent. It continues to be fixed in the viewport no matter what. Now, it's children with flex layout. We can center those children elements and then we'll drag in another div block. That's the first child of the nav wrapper. We'll call this nav button and nav button is going to be a different size. That's gonna be 40 by 40. It is now centered in the nav wrapper and we'll center its children too. Now, when we hover over nav button, we'll change the pointer so we get the pointer hover. And once we're done with that, let's drag in our assets. We have two assets here, a back button and a plus button. In this case, we're going to use the plus button and we can drag it right from assets into the nav button div we just created. Okay, let's continue. That plus button, that image that we dragged in, let's call it nav icon. We'll create a class called nav icon and we'll set its dimension to 32 on the width. It'll automatically scale the height, but that's 32 by 32. And with our nav button selected, let's go down and adjust radius. We'll change the radius to five pixels and we'll also use a box shadow. This is gonna be on the inside. This box shadow is going to be another approach for creating an outline on the inside of an element. That inner outline we see here. Okay, continuing, moving forward, we're going to create the nav menu. So we'll drag this div block in and we'll create a class called nav menu. Inside that, we'll start putting our link blocks. This one link block right here, this will be the starting point. We'll call it nav link. And inside the nav link, we can put text. Now we're familiar with what happens to text once it goes inside the nav link. In this case, we've called it home, but just like before, we'll copy and paste the nav link class to create duplicates. We'll set the display setting to block and we can adjust our padding on the inside. Let's make some modifications to the typography styles. This way we're bringing it in line with the visual language we've developed for the rest of the site. Of course, from here, we can pick any color. Let's do black. And finally, we'll make an adjustment to the font weight. So it might've occurred to you that four different links, each of which say home, won't really help with navigation. So let's rename each of those links. Let's name the bottom three links so they're broad in line with the actual sections. While we're at it, Let's center that text. Okay, let's move forward. With our nav menu selected, we can set an explicit width. We'll do 170 pixels and we can go down and add a drop shadow. This drop shadow we're going to configure specifically to have zero distance. We're gonna do a blur of, in this case, 100 pixels and we'll drop the opacity down to 15%. Okay. Let's move forward and make the final adjustments here on padding. We'll adjust padding on the top and bottom. And now that we can see everything in our nav menu, let's collapse it and bring that nav menu. We'll drag that nav menu into the nav wrapper. Why are we gonna do that? Because then we can go and position it absolutely from the top left of the nav wrapper. And the reason we're doing this, the reason we're making these adjustments from the position of the nav wrapper is because the nav wrapper is already fixed. We want, and we've already configured the nav wrapper to be fixed on the top left. So we want the nav menu to be positioned absolutely around that nav wrapper. Let's go in and continue to make adjustments. We'll make adjustments to the hover color for font. We can make that adjustment and test that out on hover. It works perfectly as we hover over each of those nav links. And now that that's configured, let's configure our interaction. With our nav button selected, the nav button's gonna be the trigger here. We're going to control what happens on mouse click. And that's going to be an animation we'll call menu entrance. Let's create that animation. And we'll animate the nav menu. With the nav menu selected, let's scale it. We'll scale it down to something really tiny like 0.01. See that? It's really tiny. We'll also hit set as initial state which will set that as the initial state. So when we create another action here, when we return this scale value to one and we go up to hit play, it animates from the initial state back to a value of one. Let's adjust that easing to create a nice ease transition and we'll go in, add another action for hide and show. 0.01 is still visible, so display none, make sure we don't see it at all. This last action will go and set the display back to block. And if we preview, it animates smoothly. It goes from not displaying to displaying. Now let's make sure it comes in from the top left. And to do that, we'll go down to transforms and we'll adjust our transform origin to come from the top left. 
we go back to interactions, if we select our nav button and go back into that mouse click that we've created, we can preview that everything's coming in from the top left. It's scaling from the top left. All right, now let's create the rotation. This is in the nav button since the nav button is selected and what we can do is go in and select the easing and we'll rotate 90 degrees to the right. If we preview that on click, it seems to rotate 90 degrees to the right. That's because it's rotating 90 degrees to the right. Let's select our nav icon. And with that selected, we can add a rotation there too. We'll do 45 degrees so that it turns into an X and we'll adjust its easing. We'll go into the easing and switch it to ease. Let's preview and see how this looks. And we're getting the spin on both. Let's close out of that and create our second click. Our second click action is going to start an animation. We can just duplicate the one we started with and open that one. Let's name it a little more effectively. Instead of menu entrance, we'll name this one menu exit. And on this one, essentially we can remove those initial states and we can go in to start affecting scale. So in this case, we wanna scale back to point zero one, and we want the rotation in all these cases with rotate to go to zero degrees. That's for the nav icon, we want it to rotate back to zero, and for the nav button, we want it to rotate back to zero. As for the hide and show, we want it to hide, to display none. Now, if we preview this in its current state, it's not going to show up correctly, and that's because it's starting at the same time as everything else. Let's remove that, and if we preview, once we've removed that, it looks a lot better. It works perfectly. Let's go into preview so we can see what's going on. We can click and repeat to see that both the first click and second click are functioning properly. As we scroll down, it's maintaining its fixed position. Of course, the hover, if we hover over each of those links, it functions beautifully. Let's go back in. Let's select our nav button and we can add a transition. But before we do that, let's select hover. Let's modify the hover state so that on hover, the radius becomes eight pixels. And when we're done with that, we'll choose the pressed state, which will be 15 pixels. And let's take a look at what that looks like in preview. We can see on hover and click, it activates perfectly. But we mentioned transitions. Let's leave preview. And once we do that, let's add a transition. The transition's going to modify the border radius, so let's do that. And if we go back into preview and we hover, we can see that transition in action. That looks good. We're gonna keep clicking this. Let's keep clicking so we can see that transition. We'll click and we'll click and... Now, in terms of responsiveness of this menu, it works fine, but we're seeing some overlapping. So what we'll do is grab the nav wrapper and set a Z value. Let's set the Z index to something like 9999, and that looks good. And the problem now is that the nav menu, we never actually set a background color. So let's set a background color. We'll go down and select a color like white, and that way we can see everything against the background. Let's set our section IDs. So if we grab our top section, we'll call it home. If we grab our section underneath that, we can call it work. If we go all the way down, we can select our clients section. We can call that something else, maybe clients. And then finally, we have this fourth section. We'll grab it and name it contact. And by doing this, we've unlocked the ability to select these from our link settings. So we'll simply grab each of these nav links, we'll go over and we'll have each of them take us to the appropriate section. All we're doing is selecting the nav link, each of the nav links, going over to link settings, choosing a section from the dropdown that corresponds to that nav link. Now let's test it out. In preview mode, if we go in and hit home, it takes us home. If we go to hit clients, it takes us to clients. If we hit work, it takes us to work. If we hit home, you get the point. So let's put our final touches on everything. Starting with the nav wrapper. With the nav wrapper, we might want to place a little bit more space between the nav wrapper on the top and the nav wrapper on the left. We can make those adjustments. And then we'll go into preview to see how everything looks on each of the views. And it seems to work beautifully. And now finally, let's use this nav wrapper we just created on our client projects template. And if we go to our body, if we go into the navigator and select our body, we can paste what we just copied over right inside. And it dropped right into the body. We can see that in the navigator. And let's delete the nav menu. We don't need it here. What we're gonna do instead is a transplant. We're going to transplant everything we created. We're going to transplant our nav button into this link block. We're turning this link block into the parent. And to do this, we'll simply add a class to the link block. We'll add nav wrapper and it looks and functions just like our nav wrapper, meaning we can delete our old nav wrapper. Let's go in and change our link settings so that everything takes us home. And if we scroll through and hit view project, it'll probably take us back. But before we do, let's change that image because it's a plus. We have a back button 
specifically designed for this. Let's apply that back button, go back to preview and test it out. If we hit it, it takes us back home. Let's zoom in and look at the work we've done. And we can click this all day, but that's it. Now, it's always a good idea to comb through the work for fixes, improvements. Some examples would be setting proper SEO titles and descriptions for each page. In our client projects, we should get that alt text from the collection, from the image description field. On the same page, of course, it's not hurting anyone, but our menu button still has a trigger tied to it. We could remove that. And did anyone notice that the contact section had an H1 while the other secondary sections were H2s? These are all quick fixes, and that's such an important part of the process. So is refinement. There are many things to look at and ways to approach this. What if we added some more margin between the projects on the main index? What if stylistically we wanted to add pluses next to our categories, as if saying stylistically makes us sound more cultured? What if the alignment of these social icons and mobile landscape was centered? And finally, what if the menu animation on our interaction rotated the plus in the other direction, 45 degrees counterclockwise, meaning the net rotation was 45 degrees clockwise? That might look even better. Is this qualifying as nitpicking? Maybe. There are no right or wrong answers here, and that's okay. What we've done is build a full CMS-driven portfolio site. That means when we go into the CMS and add a new client, everything in the site updates accordingly. We update the client project index, and that means when we hit view project, it takes us to that specific page. All this was created automatically based on that collection. So we built out a hero section, a database for our projects, a project's index, pages for each project, a client section, a contact section, an endlessly addicting button, and then we started summarizing all the work we did leading up to this very sentence. Everything works on desktop, tablet, mobile, landscape, and portrait. And with all the time we saved, we can do the things in life that matter most, like attending that combo class at Chad's Ripped Zone. But that is building a responsive, CMS-driven portfolio site in the Webflow Designer.